you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Eddie. This is my girlfriend, Cassie, and we are from Hackney in London. Couple number two. I'm Sue. This is my beautiful daughter, Alicia, and we're from Wigan. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Alec. This is my delightful partner, Olivia, and we're both from New Zealand. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Peter, and this is my firstborn, Rebecca, and we're from Bromley in Kent. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, everybody. A very warm welcome to Pointless. Uh, that's very exciting. It just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Quicker off the mark than Linford Christie being chased by a wasp. It's my Pointless friend. It's Richard. Oh, yeah. everybody. Hello there. Hello. Um, one of my favourite shows on television is, is when they have the border control programme from New Zealand. <laughs> I love it. I love the accent. It's lovely. It's just people trying to bring in food they're not allowed to bring in. It's just an endless succession of someone going, I didn't know I wasn't allowed to bring in food. And they said, you signed a declaration that said you weren't allowed to bring in food. I, 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 I didn't know, I didn't know this was, was food. food. Exactly. Absolutely love it. What a great tip. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, uh, Lewis and Rosie won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off, as it should, right back at £1,000. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. <laughs> now, remember, it will always be the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so you, you just have to keep your scores low and everything will be great. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category today is... Pop music. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. So, the question concerns... Artists with the most played songs of the 2010s. Richard. Uh, yeah, we're going to show you 16 faces uh, in a minute, which all of whom have released one of the most played songs of the 2010s. Who are these people, please? Oh, who indeed. Right, so we're going to put this image up, as Richard says. Uh, it'll stay up for the whole round. 16 faces. We won't be changing it halfway through. And let's reveal the faces of the most played songs. Hmm. This is that the organisation PPL, who collect royalties for every time a song is played on radio or television or in public places. Mm. There we are. Now, Cassie, Hi. you are most welcome back on Point. This is your second show. Yeah. Um, remind us all about yourself. I am a crowdfunding campaigns executive and also I have recently qualified as a project worker for a mental health creative writing charity. Very good indeed. Um, how, so did the, the qualification for that, was that something you were doing at the same time as the crowdfunding? Yeah, so I don't work, it's uh, just a few days a week. I will do these sessions for like an hour and a half with people and it's to help them use creative writing skills to kind of con um, create skills for them to work on their mental health. That's brilliant. What a brilliant thing to be doing. Uh, Cassie, the board of the most heard people, okay. most heard artists of the 2010s. So the person I'm looking at, I actually think has two names. <gasps> I'm going to say uh, Niles Barkley or CeeLo Green. Or CeeLo. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, a chipping in from Eddie there. Sorry. Oh, just chipping in. No, it's fine. <laughs> no, if I wants to chip in, if I wants to chip in any time, feel free. Um, OK, Niles Barkley or CeeLo Green. We're going to have to take one or the other. I'll go CeeLo Green, then. CeeLo Green. Let's see how many of our 100 people said CeeLo Green. It's right. CeeLo Green's very much up there. And down we go to 20. What a great start to the round and indeed the show, Cassie. Thank you. Yeah, very well done. It wouldn't have taken Niles Barkley because that's the band. Uh, that's CeeLo oh. Green and, and Danger Mouse, the um, producer. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So it's not, it's not his stage name. CeeLo Green, very much his name. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Alicia, welcome. How lovely to have you here. Tell Hello. us all about yourself. Uh, I'm a freelance digital artist at the moment. Oh, that's fun. Uh, so do you, what, what sort of things do you do? Um, I do a lot of, like, Victorian and, like, Georgian portraiture, so cameos and fashion plates, that sort of thing. Wow. Oh, that's huge fun. So, yeah, but so G Victorian was sort of early pho photography. Yeah. And sort of, uh, yeah, and there, but Georgian, obviously, engraving, is that right? Or Yeah, so it's, you know, it's a lot of looking at some of them, sometimes for references, you're looking at photos, and for yeah. some it's drawings. And... and try and just uh, replicate that style, yeah. I think. That's great fun. Um, Alicia, what are you going to go for? Who are you going to go for? 
Well, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble if this is wrong <gasps> because this is my best friend's favourite singer, but I think that is Carly Rae Jepsen. Carly Rae Jepsen, you're getting a nod from Chip in Eddie. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people... He's playing, he's building his part quite a lot here, Eddie, isn't he? I mean, extraordinary. Uh, you have to say, for, for a man who scored 100 on the yeah. last show, he's very, very cocky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Carly Rae Jepsen, let's see how many of our 100 people spotted Carly Rae Jepsen. Carly Rae Jepsen is right. Well, 20 is the only score we have at the moment. And you saw past that, down six. Very well done indeed. Alicia, your friend uh, can pat you on the back. Yeah, call me maybe the 21st most played song of that decade. I forgot to say that uh, Forget You by CeeLo Green was the ninth most played song of the decade. Uh, it's a great song. Mm. Thank you very much indeed. Alec, welcome. Great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Um, I'm, I work in an environmental charity uh, which combats environmental crime. So I do things like monitoring the illegal timber trade and illegal logging. My job. I see. Where do you where do you do that from? From London, yeah, yeah. But um, we are, we're looking often at um, illegal logging that's happening in places like um, in Southeast Asia, um, and then when it's being shipped to other parts of the world to try and track the illegal trade. Oh, when Did they you... try and when they try and smuggle it into New Zealand I through was the airport. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Excuse me, sir. Is that teak? Yeah, oh. did, I was, yeah, that was the, the, the other question I was going to ask. Did you pack this bag yourself? <laughs> um, anyway, yes, yeah, so, um, Alec, great to have you here. Um, who are you going to go for? Um, I'm going to go for someone who I think was great in the Cats movie, uh, Jason Derulo. Jason Derulo, let's see if that is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jason Derulo. That goes down to 14. Very well done indeed. Jason Derulo. Uh, very well played. There's some lovely scoring going on here. Yeah, Want to Want Me was uh, the 13th most played song of the decade. I think it passed me by. And me too. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Um, OK, Rebecca. Hello. Welcome back for your third and final time. Thank you. Great to have you with us. Remind us all about yourself. Uh, yeah, so um, I've just finished my classics degree, actually. So I've got a lot more free time at the moment to oh. kind of play games and... Uh, read, and I've got a little part-time job as well as a social media writer. Very good indeed. Um, Rebecca, so who are these music artists? Who are you going to go for? Um, I think I'm going to take a bit of a risk and say Ella Henderson. Ella Henderson. Ella Henderson. Some great answers here. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Ella Henderson. Ooh. Ella Henderson is right. Well, 20 is still our high score. Six is our low. You pass the high score. You pass the low. Look at that, Ella Henderson scoring you four. That's great. Very well played, yeah. 36 on the list with uh, Ghost. We're really clearing up some of the, uh, yeah. the lowest scoring answers here. Very it's very, very good. impressive stuff. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Four, the best score of the past, Rebecca. Very well done indeed. Then up to six, where we find Alicia and Sue. Then up to 14, where we find Alec and Olivia. And then up to 20, where we find Cassie and Eddie. Eddie? You know what I'm going to say to you. Do the thing that I was going to say. Lovely low score. We'll see you in round two. Good luck with that. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Um, Peter, welcome back. Lovely to have you with us for your third time. Uh, remind us all about yourself. Um, I'm a father of three, originally from Mauritius, and I'm a former Dragon Boat World Champion. Oh, you kept that quiet till now. <laughs> what if you'd got into the final last time and you hadn't told us? Oh, well, I would have at that point. Um, where, did you, where did you do this? Where did it take place, um, the world? The, um, across the world. I mean, we, 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 uh, we raced in, uh, in Hungary, in Canada, in, uh, yeah, in the UK, and, and in Tampa, Florida as well. How, where did you win the world championship? Uh, in, in Hungary. But That's it even so came up as a so question. That's and, right. And, and you didn't say you were the world champion. No. I don't I think if something I was a world champion then came up as a question, I would say, I think. It would literally be the first thing. I'd, I'd, I'd have said that before I said, when I was introducing, I'd say, hello, um, I'm Alexander, I'm a world champion, Dragon Boat, and this is my friend Richard. Former world champion. Former world champion. Listen, but you'll always be world champion. They can't ever take it away from you. Yeah. At, at that event, yes. <laughs> Very good. Thank Peter, you. good. On, in fact, on both scores. Good. Four is your score at the moment. Oh. Um, who are you going to go for? Right, I do actually know all of those, so I'm going to plump for Rag and Bone Man. Rag and Bone Man, says Peter. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Rag and Bone Man. You get a red line as well. Here it comes. Rag and Bone Man is right. 
28 takes your total up to 32. So another good score as well. You're yeah, the 39th best uh, or most listened to song of that decade, Human. Mm. That's a lovely song. song. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Olivia, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Uh, great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, so I work as an HR manager at the moment, and when I'm not working, I'm a spoken word poet. So when we are allowed to, I... Speak the words. Performing. Yeah. Speak the words. Are these the words of Olivia you speak, or yes. are they? Yes. Very good indeed. How yeah. long have we been uh, writing and performing poetry? Oh, about six or seven years now. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Do, do your poems have a comic angle, or do they? Are they? Are they? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, yeah. Sometimes political. Sometimes. I see. Funny. Yeah. Very good. Good for you. Uh, well, well, we'll discuss this <laughs> across your three-show career. Um, 14 is your score at the moment. 17 or less gets you into the next round. Who are you going to go for? I am going to try Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson, says Olivia. Here is your red line. Let's see if we can get you below this with Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson's right. Gets you through. Look at that, Olivia. Down goes Kelly Clarkson to eight, taking your total up to 22. Yes, yeah, Stronger by Kelly Clarkson from 2012. I do know that song. I know, yes, I know that song. Um, now then, welcome Sue. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Hi, I'm Sue. I'm a civil servant from Wigan. Don't hold that against me. Um... The civil servant bit or the Wigan bit? I wouldn't hold either <laughs> of those against you, Sue. Uh, and I, I'm, a, I'm a big reader. I love reading and things like that. Um, Lovely. Yeah. I've got the cutest cat in the world. What sort of cat is it? Uh, a large cat. A, a, a big cat. A big cat. That's the answer yeah. I wanted. Yep, big cat. Good. <laughs> um, and uh, on the cuteness scale, one to a hundred? Oh, in the thousands, definitely. Okay. Yeah. And he's right. 20 now as well, so he's doing <gasps> oh, well no. to keep his looks. Wow. He really is doing well. Oh, he's very beautiful. Oh, very beautiful, indeed. <laughs> okay, now, Sue, there you are on six. If you can score 25 or less, you're into round two. <sighs> 16 artists there of the most played songs of the 2010s. Who are they? I will go for Emily Sande. Emily Sande. Emily Sande. Here is your red line, Sue. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Emily Sande. Emily Sande is right. Gets you through. Look at that, down to 22 with Emily Sande, taking your total up to 28. I mean, this scoring is great across Isn't it? the board. Isn't uh, it? I have to say, uh, 37th on the list with next to me. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Eddie, welcome. <laughs> Good to have you here again. Um, remind us all about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, I work in communications for a charity now, but I used to be a journalist, and when I did my dissertation, I trained as a pro wrestler. Professional wrestler? Did you, did you get so far as having a name? Well, I just, the, the crowd were aware that I was a journalist doing this documentary. I'd been filming for like over a month. So they just said, this, this guy's given it a try. And that kind of worked better, I think, than having an actual name. Because <laughs> people well, gave me some sympathy as a guy who'd never wrestled before. <laughs> Whoa. How did it go? Surprisingly well. Um, I was really nervous. I was actually sick before the match, but it, no one saw that. But better, when I, better than being sick during it. I mean, that'd be exactly, terrible. But in, Whoa, but went, someone's spinning you around. <laughs> the match went well enough that um, I actually got asked to do another event afterwards, and then we moved. So. But yeah, it went quite well. Have you got any evidence of this? You've got a, has it been filmed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the documentary's it. on YouTube, and um, wow. I'm going to upload the match, the full match, at some point. But it was with WAW, the guys who did the movie Fighting with My Family. That, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Good for you, Eddie. That sounds <laughs> hilarious. Um, you need to score <laughs> 11, by the way, with this your answer. Do you want to talk us through the board? Yeah, sure. Um, it's a weird one because I would have thought Jason Derulo would be well known because he's had hits for years, but he only had 14. I didn't think Rag and Bone Man would be that well known, so it's tough to know who's not been answered a lot. Rag and Bone Man literally twice as well known yeah, exactly. as uh, Jason Derulo. So fact. there's Bruno Mars, Pharrell Williams, Ed Sheeran, Adele, Jesse J, Katy Perry, Justin Timberlake, Lady Gaga and Rihanna. So I know them all, but I don't know who's the well, least you well known. You know them at speed. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. I like music. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to go with Pharrell, because he's normally a producer or uh, he features more than he does star in things. So Pharrell okay. Williams. Pharrell. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Pharrell Williams. Here is your red line, quite low. Pharrell Williams is right. Oh. Ah. 17 for Pharrell Williams takes your total up to 37. Not a bad score. And he had the most played song of the decade with Happy and was mm. fourth on the list with Get Lucky as well with Daft Punk. Now, I think this might be a pointless first. Uh, so I want to commend all of you. Congratulations. 16 names on the board. There's eight of you. 
and he came up with the best eight answers on the board. Never seen it before, ever, ever, ever. So that literally the best eight answers couldn't have played the round any better. Congratulations to everyone. I've got goosebumps. I've actually <laughs> genuinely got goosebumps. Just want to say that. But how about that? And how no. unfortunate to get knocked out in that round as well. This is, I mean, you've been not... <laughs> poor old uh, Cassie. Yeah. She's knocked out twice now, once after getting a pointless answer and once after being in the greatest round in pointless history. I know. <laughs> <sighs> if you get knocked out in the first round next time, I, mean, I don't know what's going to happen. Our relationship's on a thread. We... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, this one I don't think you can blame Eddie for. Last time you definitely can. This one he did, uh, that's the best answer left to him. Um, let's go through the eight biggest scorers, all of which remain untouched. Bruno Mars, uh, and Eddie's been through all of these as well, so he would have scored 50. Adele would have scored 76. Ed Sheeran just beats Adele, 78 for Ed Sheeran. Jesse J would have scored you 38. Katy Perry, 64. Uh, Justin Timberlake, 40. Lady Gaga, 54, and Rihanna, 62. Isn't that amazing? Eight amazing. out of eight. Amazing. Very impressive. Well done, everyone. Yeah, well done, everybody. Well, that brings us to the end of this amazing round, our first round. It means we have to say goodbye to our first pair. Oh, Eddie and Cassie, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think in the general scheme of things, I'm sure Pointless owes you one. You know, the next time we see you, which will in fact be your third attempt, I hope, I hope we can serve that up. Anyway, if there's any justice, uh, thank you very much for playing Eddie and Cassie. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, now time for round two. <laughs> well done, everybody. You've gone into pointless history. That's amazing. Rebecca, you were our lowest scorer in that historic low-scoring round uh, individually. And um, Olivia and Alec, you were our, our lowest combined scorers, so well done. It's great to have you here in round two. Um, best of luck to everybody. Our category for round two this afternoon is... People, places, things. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Things with a double U, as opposed to a W. Absolutely. There's going to be six clues on each board. Every single answer begins with a U and has another U somewhere else in its name. So, begins with a U, has another U somewhere else. Six on the first board, six on the second. Twelve in all to have a go at home. Good luck. Thanks very much indeed. So, let's reveal our first board of six clues. <laughs> We've got term for the two dots used over the letters A, O and U in German to indicate a change in the vowel sound. Frank Gardner's second novel featuring MI6 officer Luke Carlton. Theatre performer who learns a main role to serve as a replacement in case of emergency. British actress who played Mrs Hudson in the 2010 BBC drama Sherlock. The books following the mishaps suffered by the Baudelaire children, as told by Lemony Snicket, are called a series of these. And the 1979 UK top ten hit for Squeeze, whose title is the final three words of the lyrics. There we go. Alicia. How do we like our board? I know a couple of them. It's more just working out what's going to be low scoring. Um, but I think I'm going to go for the one I'm most sure of, which is a theatre performer who learns a main role, which is the understudy. Understudy, says Alicia. Let's see how many of our 100 said understudy. <laughs> 55 for understudy. Uh, yeah, the few, uh, well, many understudies go on to be famous, but Stan Laurel was famously Charlie Chaplin's understudy uh, in a theatre troupe. And Anthony Hopkins was Laurence Olivier's understudy at the National, stepped in to uh, replace him. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Nice, isn't it? Nice to know. Alec. How you doing? Um, I only knew two on the board, uh, and one's been taken, so I'll go with the one I still know, which is the Lemony Snicket Books, a series of unfortunate events. OK, a series of unfortunate events for the Lemony Snicket. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. 24 for a series of unfortunate events. Yep, nicely played. Uh, there's a film, of course, about them with Jim Carrey starring. They also did a TV series with Neil Patrick Harris. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah. Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. Who's mm. the you, the you look says, alike. I look like. And I, I do look a bit... I, yeah. I'll be quite honest, I think I'm very flattered by the comparison. 
I think he I is. Think. I, no, I think no, you no, both you're are. Very you're both very handsome men. I th oh, no, 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 no. If I were Neil Patrick Harris, I would abhor being told that I, uh, that I look like this. Would you? Oh, I'm going to make it my life's ambition to tell Neil Patrick Harris he looks <laughs> like you and see what he says. Yeah, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now then, Peter. Oh, OK. Um, I know a few of these. Um, Do you want to, yes, sorry, I was going to say, talk us through the I, board, Peter. Um, sorry. Some of them, yes. So, Una Stubbs is the actress in Sherlock, and the song by Squeeze is Up the Junction. But I'm going to go for the top one, and that's an umlaut. An umlaut, or with the umlaut over it, umlaut. There we are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's find out how many of our 100 people said umlaut. Well, 55 is the high score, 24 is the low. Look at that, 23. Very nicely done, Peter. Yes, from um meaning about and laut meaning sound. So turn the sound around, essentially. Hmm. That's what umlaut means. Uh, funnily enough, your other two answers would have scored fewer points. Uh, so you're right about both of them. It is Eun Stubbs. She would have scored you uh, 15, one of my favourite songs of all time, Up the Junction. Oh, Absolutely song. right with that. Um, and that would have scored nine points. It's been a lovely answer. Frank Gardner's second novel. I'm amazed you called it this, because it's also quite famously the name of a, another big thriller, Ultimatum. Um, One point for Ultimatum. There we go, thank you. We are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. 23, the best score of the past, Peter. Very well done. Then we travel up to 24, where we find Alec and Olivia, and then up to 55, where Alicia and Sue currently reside. Sue, you know what I'm going to recommend you do. Good luck with that. Let's have something lovely at the end of the board by the time it gets to you. Uh, we'll come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put six more clues that describe answers with two U's in them. Here we go. We've got Seventh Planet from the Sun, discovered in 1781 by William Herschel. 1989 comedy film starring John Candy and Macaulay Culkin. Warwickshire Home, bought by philanthropists Lord and Lady Bairstead in 1927. 1981 UK number one hit for Queen and David Bowie. Collective term for the Imperius, Cruciatus and Avada Kedavra spells from the Harry Potter novels. And woman who played Honey Rider in the Bond film, Dr No. There we go. Rebecca. Yes. Um, I know a few of them. Um... Again, it's just deciding which one to go for, but I think I will try the collective term for the Harry Potter novels as unforgivable curses. Unforgivable curses, says Rebecca. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said unforgivable curses. Here is your red line. Unforgivable curses is right. And gets you through. Very well done. Down it goes to three. That's a great answer. Taking your total up to 26. Yeah, very nicely done. A generation of Harry Potter fans going, how did that only score three? <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, one of those scores based on Abracadabra, which, which set, some people say comes from the Aramaic for um, may the thing be destroyed. Oh. Just suppose it, poof, Abracadabra, yeah, something disappears. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Olivia, Hi. you are on 24, yeah. by the way. 30 or less gets you through. I think a Harry Potter question was my dream, so that's slightly I unfortunate. Saw, I did see, I saw you deflate uh, a little that's bit. That's slightly unfortunate, and now I'm going to take a bit of a punt and say that the 1989 comedy film is Home Alone. Home Alone. Home Alone. Let us draw a veil over the, the W requirement oh. for a moment, <laughs> but uh, Home Alone, um, possibly. Here is your red line. Let's see what happens when we say Home Alone. Sorry, it scores you 100, takes your total up to 124. Yeah. Sorry, Olivia. Point this can do funny things to the brain, especially yeah. when someone's <laughs> just taken your answer and you were ready to give it. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not Home Alone. Sorry. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Sue. Sue, you are on 55. If you can score 68 or less, there's a place for you in the head to head. It's hard knowing which one to go for that's going to score 68 or less. I'll go for the film with John Candy and Macaulay Culkin. I think it was Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck, says Sue. Uncle Buck, let's see how many of our 100 people said Uncle Buck. Here's your red line. Uncle Buck is right. And you are through. Very well done indeed. Danny goes to 26. Takes your total up to 81. 
Yeah, very well played. That's, that's a year before Home Alone. They are both in Home Alone as well. I mean, it, listen, it's an awful trap to fall into. Ever so sorry. Um, let's fill in the rest of these, shall we? The seventh planet from the Uranus. sun. Uranus. Uranus. That would have scored you 53. Do you know this? What the works your home? Um, it's something house we can probably work out because of the second U. It begins with a U. Uh, um, 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 Umberton. Umberton House. Um, Umberton House. Umberton House. Umberton House. Upton House was the answer. <laughs> Upton House. Upton House. Uh, Would we'll have scored you two points. Uh, the Queen Bowie hit. Under pressure. Under pressure. Would we'll have scored 38. And the actor at the bottom. Ursula Andress. Ursula Andress. Well, it's called 29, so Upton House is the best answer on that board. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that brings us to the end of our second round, and it means we have to say goodbye to a pair. I'm so sorry, Olivia and Alec. I saw exactly what happened there. But do you know what? It's good news. Because what if, if you'd gone through to the to the head-to-head, -head, you'd have probably gone through to the final, and then that would have been it. <laughs> um, it means we now get to see you at least one more time, which would be great. Anyway, thank you very much for playing, Olivia and Alec. <laughs> for the remaining two pairs, though, it is now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Rebecca and Peter, Sue and Alicia. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, we get a little opportunity here to lob a little bit more money into that jackpot by seeing if we can find a couple of pointless answers. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... ..recurring characters on The Simpsons. OK. ..as they could, Ooh, Richard. Oh, that feels doable. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? We Simpsons fans? Uh, we're going to show you six names on the board. Four of them will be your recurring characters in The Simpsons. Two of them, though no one would have mentioned, there'll also be two fake answers up there. So Homer or Noma? Nice. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our six potential pointless characters from The Simpsons. Dewey Martin, Fat Tony, Scott Christian, Helen Lovejoy, Loretta Brown and Rod Flanders. All right, so Loretta Brown is definitely not, because I think that's in one of the other shows. Excellent. In, in uh, Family Guy. Fat Tony's definitely a character. There's Rod and Todd, isn't there? Rod and Todd definitely is. Helen so Lovejoy, I think. Helen Lovejoy is Helen a vicar's wife. So let's say Dewey Martin. Fat uh, Tony's the mafia guy. Yeah, fact, should we go, well, hang on, Dewey Martin, is that, who's that from? Dewey sounds more right than Scott. Yes, yeah, should we go for Dewey and maybe... Sc Scott Christian? Scott Christian, Scott Christian Helen? Yeah. Helen? Can we go for Dewey and Helen? Yeah, we'll yeah, go for Dewey. Yeah. OK, Rebecca and Peter. Who are you going to go for as a pointless Simpsons guy? I think we're going to go for Dewey Martin. Dewey Martin. Dewey Martin. Shall we find out if that is a pointless Simpsons character? Oh. No. <laughs> no. I'm afraid not. Uh, Sue and Alicia, over to you. Uh, we'll go for Helen Lovejoy. Please. Helen Lovejoy. Let's find out if Helen Lovejoy is a pointless Simpsons character. Most definitely a Simpsons character. Ah, oh, very well done indeed. A pointless answer. It's exactly what we needed. Yeah, very nicely done. But using everyone's knowledge there to, uh, to good effect. I um, think, you, think your new uh, Loretta Brown is in Family Guy. You're absolutely right. Rod Flanders, uh, yeah, Rod and Todd are uh, Ned Flanders' uh, sons. Would have scored two points. Fat Tony. Is it? Is, in is, yeah, in definitely. An in awful it. lot. Yeah. yeah. Would have scored you two, and Scott Christian is one of Kent Brockman's colleagues on the uh, on the news program, like a co-anchor. Scott Christian, I didn't recall him. So no. There you go. Scott Christian and Helen Lovejoy. Very well done if you said those. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Well done. You managed to find one pointless answer, which means you've added two hundred fifty pounds to the jackpot. It now stands at one thousand two hundred fifty pounds. Very well done. But who will be playing for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. -head. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot, and you are now allowed to confer before you give your answers. Best of luck to both pairs. Here comes our first question, and it is all about... UK birds swimming underwater. Richard. Yeah, five pictures now of birds from the UK swimming underwater. We'll give you the first letters of their names, please, and the number of letters in their names as well. But what are these birds? Thank you very much. Let's reveal the five birds. Here they come. A. P. B. G. It's amazing photographs. Aren't they? C. E.
D, C. And E, K. Wow. Oh, wow. Lovely. Some nice screensavers there. Aren't they just? Um, OK, now, Rebecca and Peter, you're our golden couple. You get to go first. Mm. Yeah, what do you think? Don't say anything else. Yeah, go on then. Okay. I think D is a cormorant. D, cormorant, say Rebecca and Peter. Over to you, Sue and Alicia. Do you want to talk us through the board? Uh, yeah, I'd like to go for D, cormorant. <laughs> <laughs> um, a is a puffin. B, I, I just can't think what that might be. Um, C, I would guess, is an ida. And E is a kingfisher. And I think we'll have to go with ida I and hope for the best. Okay. Which is what do you think? Yeah, that's yeah. C, Ida. So we've got Cormorant and we've got Ida. Uh, Rebecca and Peter went for Cormorant for D. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Cormorant. Oh, Cormorant is right, goes down to 37. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sue and Alicia have gone for Ida for C. Let's see how many of our 100 said Ida. It is an idea. And it wins the point for you. Look at that. Down goes the idea. Down it goes to 16. There you are. Very well done. After one question, you're up one nil. Yeah, I had to take the risk there. Very well played. The UK's heaviest duck. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a show I should pitch. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, a, absolutely right, is a puffin. Would have scored 45. We'll go down to E now, uh, which, of course, is the kingfisher. Gorgeous photo. 77 for that. Uh, do you know uh, B? I think I do. I think it's a gannet. Let's take a look. Is it a gannet? Yes. Absolutely right. Well played. 27 points for a gannet. Thank you very much indeed. Well, here comes your second question. Now, Rebecca and Peter, we need to have you on your front feet here because yes. Sue and Alicia get to answer it first. You've got to win it. Stay in the game. So good luck. Our second question is all about... Falls, Richard. Yeah, five clues uh, related to the word falls or fall. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five clues, and here they come. The actor who played the title role in the 1970s TV series The Fall and Rise of Reginald Perrin, singer-songwriter who had a UK number one album in 2019 with When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? The actor whose final film role was a sports writer turned boxing promoter Eddie Willis in the 1956 film The Harder They Fall, Nursery rhyme character who experiences a great fall from his position of sitting on a wall and the deadly sin, which is proverbially said to come before a fall. Soon, Alicia. Do you know the singer songwriter? Yeah, it's Billy Irish. Hmm? It's Billy Irish. Okay, you'll be that then. Okay. You say? Uh, we're going to go with number two, the singer songwriter. Um, we're going to say Billy Eilish. Billy Eilish, say Sue and Alicia for the second one. Uh, Rebecca and Peter, do you want to talk us through that board? Mm. Uh, Not too sure. Um, do you no, know the top one? I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> no. Do you know the actor whose final film role was a sports no, writer? No. Or Humpty Dumpty? Do you think it's Pride comes before? It is Pride comes before. I think out of Humpty Dumpty. Pride I'll, I'll go for the top one. Uh, Len oh. Leonard Rossiter. Okay. Leonard Rossiter for the top ones. We have Leonard Rossiter and we have Billie Eilish. Um, Sue and Alicia went for Billie Eilish for the uh, album When We Fall Asleep. Where do we go? Let's see how many of our 100 said Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish is right. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's very good. Down it goes to six. Very well done indeed, Alicia. And Sue, but Alicia. <laughs> uh, and Rebecca and Peter have gone for Leonard Rossiter for the, uh, the actor from Reginald Perrin. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Leonard Rossiter. Leonard Rossiter is right. It's got six to beat. There it is, 35. And that means Sue and Alicia, whoosh, like a knife through butter. You are through the head-to-head -head and you are into the final 2-0. Very well done. I sense you won one of those each as well. So <laughs> it's uh, very, very nice. Yeah, I love a bit of Billy Eilish. It's brilliant. Mm. Let's go through the rest of this, shall we? The nursery rhyme character absolutely is Humpty Dumpty. Of course, it is a big scorer. Would have scored 82. It is pride that comes before a fall. And that would have scored 49 points. 
Now, this last one, probably going to be some guesswork involved in this. Do you have a clue on this? The actor, so a famous actor who died in the, in the 50s. Born in 1899. Mm -hmm. This gentleman. Mm -hmm. um, he's won one Oscar, not for his most famous film. He's most famous for one particular film, but he won his Oscar for The African Queen. Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart is the answer. Humphrey Bogart. Wow. Very well done if you said that. I almost a pointless answer. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. <laughs> Rebecca and Peter, I can't believe this. There you are in prime position there to go through to the final on this, your third show. Yeah. It seemed entirely poetic and right, but um, I'm afraid this is where we say goodbye. Thank you so much for playing. Rebecca and Peter, it's been fabulous Ooh. having you on the show. Thank you. <laughs> but for Sue and Alicia, time for their pointless final. Congratulations, Sue and Alicia. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win the pointless jackpot and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,250. Very well done. Straight through to the final in your first show. Underdogs in the head-to-head, -head, straight through that 2-0. I mean, that is extraordinary. What an achievement. In recognition of that, you've got the trophy, but quite nice to take the jackpot home as well. Uh, what do you want to see come up in this last round? Harry Potter, musical theatre. Cheese. Harry Potter, musical theatre <laughs> and cheese. There we go. There we go. That was nice and succinct. No oh. mucking about. That's yeah. the kind of quality that's brought you to this final, by the <laughs> sure. way. Yeah. Absolute no, clarity of thought. Completely. Um, OK, let's see what we can put up on our board for you. Four things. And they are the Roosevelts, literary honours, Lloyd Webber on film, West Indies cricket. That is uncannily like what you asked for. Gonna... I think we might have to. Yeah, go on. Uh, we're going to go with Lloyd Webber on film, please. Lloyd Webber on film. Oh, it's a pretty good fit, isn't it? Um, here's your three questions. We're looking for any of the following, please. We're looking for anyone who appeared in the film Evita in 1996, anyone who appeared in Phantom in 2004, and anyone who appeared in Cats, please, from 2019. So, according to IMDb, anyone credited with appearing in the movies of Evita, Phantom of the Opera, or Cats. Very best of luck. Thank you very much. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, so Phantom of the Opera, I think we should say Mini Driver, maybe. I don't know. She's quite a big part. Um, but Kieran Hines. Kieran Hines. Kieran Hines is that girl who was in... who plays a friend who was in Brookside. Jennifer. Jennifer Ellison. Ellison. Jennifer Ellison. So Jennifer Ellison, Kieran Hines. What, what's the name of Rita Skeeter? Of who? Yeah, what's the name of Rita Skeeter? Who was the ballet mistress? Oh, I can't think. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember something. <laughs> I don't know. I think it, what about Evita? Evita. Evita, I can't think of anyone. Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price. Let's go with Jonathan Price for Evita. Um, Andrea Core. I don't know who that is, so let's go with that. Andrea Core sings another suitcase. Well, a little bit of it, because Madonna did it. OK, yeah. So shall we go with Andrea Core Andrea for Cole Evita? For Evita. And then Kieran Hines and Jennifer Ellison. Kieran Hines and Jennifer Fanson. Ellison. Fanson. Okay. OK. Well, it sounds like you've come up with your three answers, and we can just let the sands of our minute just re run luxuriously through the glass. There we are. OK, now, what are you going to give me? Do you want to do it? Um, so we're going to go with, for Phantom of the Opera, Gonna say Kieran Hines. Kieran Hines. And Jennifer Ellison. Jennifer Ellison. And for Evita, we're going to say Andrea Core. Andrea Core. Okay, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Uh, Kieran Hines, I, I think. I would say Kieran Hines. Okay, yeah. Kieran Hines goes last. Least likely to be pointless? Probably Andrea Core. Andrea yeah. Core, and then we put Jennifer Ellison in the middle. Okay, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Andrea Core. Jennifer Ellison and Kieran Hines. Well, very, very best of luck. If one of these turns out to be pointless, and they look like excellent answers from where I'm standing, but what do I know? Um, if one of them does turn out to be pointless, wins the jackpot, £1,250. What would you like to do with it? Uh, we want to get matching tattoos, don't we? For my 21st, yeah. Yeah. Of, of the pointless column, maybe? Possibly. <laughs> Richard maybe. Osman's smiling face. Maybe I could get Richard, you could get Xander. Yeah. Marvellous. Nice. I mean, I'd Perfect. recommend against it. That feels like <laughs> yeah, something you might regret so. in the morning. I think yeah, in the morning, yeah. 
Um, well, listen, very, very, very best of luck. Your first answer is Andrea Kaur. In this case, we're looking for cast of the film Vita. Let's see if Andrea Kaur is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Andrea Kaur. Well, Andrea Kaur is right. If we go all the way down to zero with Andrea Kaur, £1,250 is yours. Down we go through the teens. Into single figures, still going down, still going down with Andrea Kaur. One. <laughs> One of our 100 people said Andrea Kaur. So we turn to Jennifer Ellison and we are now with the Phantom of the Opera. Let's find out how many of our 100 people said Jennifer Ellison. Jennifer Ellison's right. Andrea Kaur so nearly won you that jackpot of £1,250. Jennifer Ellison now takes us down through the teens into single figures, still going down with Jennifer Ellison, still going down. One! One person. Do you think it was the same person who got Andrea Kaur? Hmm. OK. We have to hope nobody went for Kieran Hines. This was the one you thought was going to be your best shot at a pointless answer. Please, can it be pointless? We're still looking at the cast of Phantom of the Opera. How many people said Kieran Hines? Well, it's right. You knew it was right. This was the one you thought was your best shot. We've had a one so far and a one from Andrea Kaur and Jennifer Ellison. We now get down with Kieran Hines. Still going down, still going down. You've done it! There we are! To twos all round! <laughs> Congratulations, Kieran Hines was a pointless answer, which means you are taking home today's jackpot of £1,250. Brilliant. Very nicely done indeed. One, one, to two. <laughs> uh, very, very good. Let's take a look, shall we, at the pointless answers in the different categories. Clearly a good category for you. Uh, Evita, you could have had uh, Gary Brooker, Julia Worsley, Nicholas Grace, the great Peter Polycarpi was a pointless answer there. The only people to score points, Madonna, Antonio Banderas, Jimmy Nail, Jonathan Price would have scored points. You mentioned him. He would have scored three. Uh, Alan Parker uh, is, uh, has a, a role in that as well, as you might expect. Um, now, Phantom of the Opera, uh, including the actor who plays Rita Skeeter here. Miranda Richardson, she would have been a pointless answer. James Fleet, there's Kieran Hines, he just won either money, Simon Callow as well. Um, the people who scored there, Gerard Butler, Emmy Rossum, Jennifer Ellison, as we know, Minnie Driver and Patrick Wilson. All of those scored one point. And Cats, Danny Collins, Laurie Davidson, Ray Winston is in it, Zizi Stralin. Um, the people who scored points there, Judy Dench, James Corden, Taylor Swift, Idris Elba, Rebel Wilson, Jason Derulo. Our old friend. Mm. Heard a lot about Jason Derulo we today, haven't now. we? Um, Ian McKellen, Jennifer Hudson and Francesca Hayward. Everyone else is pointless. Very well done. If you've got any of those at home. Thank you very much indeed. And thanks once again to our winning players, Sue and Alicia, who take away today's jackpot of £1,250. Brilliant. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>